Let's have a look at this indefinite integration. Uh, here they would like us to carry out the indefinite integral of x cubed minus one over x plus two dx. For this, I'm going to use the substitution method. However, uh, there doesn't appear to really be a good substitution I can make. I could possibly make uh, x cubed minus one, set that equal to u, but what I'll find is uh, that's not gonna quite work for me. I could set u to be x plus two, but that's also not really gonna help me out very much. I could try to set the whole thing equal to u, um, but that's not going to help me out either. Um, what I'm going to do first is I'm actually going to take a look at this integrand and notice that on the top what I have is a polynomial of degree 3. So the highest power in this uh, in the top um, of the fraction here is 3. So it's degree 3 polynomial. And on the bottom here, the uh, this is a polynomial of degree 1 because the highest power of x in the bottom is 1. So I notice that I have a... Uh, degree three polynomial divided by a degree one polynomial. And whenever you have a, uh, a higher degree polynomial divided by a lower degree polynomial, you can actually remember that we can actually carry out this division by using long division. So that's what we're actually gonna do before we even get started uh, because that'll actually make this integration simpler for us. So let's carry out a long division. So what we're gonna do is this is going to be um, our denominator, or that's the denominator, so that's what we're dividing by. And what we're going to divide is what's on top here, which is x cubed minus one. But whenever carrying out a long division, we wanna make sure that we have all of the powers of x up to degree three represented. So we have x cubed plus zero x squared plus zero x minus one. Okay, so now we have a degree three, a degree two, a degree one, and a degree zero term. Um, so now we can go ahead and carry out this um, long division. So to do long division, what we do is we take the first term here, which is x cubed, and we ask ourselves, what do we need to multiply x by to get x cubed? And the answer obviously is x squared, because x squared times x gives me x cubed. So I'm gonna put the x squared up there. Now what I do is I multiply the x squared by uh, this thing sitting out front of the long division. x squared times x is x cubed. x squared times two is two x squared. And now I'm gonna subtract those two things. x cubed minus x cubed is zero, of course. And zero x squared minus two x squared is negative two x squared. Next step is to bring down this zero x. So this becomes zero x. And now I ask myself, uh, what do I need to multiply x by to get negative 2x squared? And the answer is negative 2x. So now I actually carry out that multiplication. Negative 2x times x is negative 2x squared. Negative 2x times 2 is minus 4x. And then I subtract these things. Um, negative 2x squared minus 2x squared is 0. 0 minus 4x is sorry, zero minus minus four is positive four. So that's four X. And then I can bring down this one here. This becomes negative one. And the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ask myself, what do I need to multiply uh, X by to get four X? And the answer is four. And now I carry that out. I get four times X is four X. Four times two is eight. And if I subtract those things, I have 4x minus 4x, which is 0, and negative 1 minus 8 is negative 9. So the remainder, this is the remainder, the remainder is negative 9. So what does all of this do for me? Why would I bother doing all of this? Well, the reason I do all of this is because now, um, instead of writing x cubed minus 1 uh, divided by x plus 2, I can actually rewrite um, what this actually tells me is that x cubed minus one divided by x plus two is actually equal to um, x squared minus two x plus four minus nine over x plus two. Um, this has nothing to do with integration, by the way. This is just the fact that if I took x cubed minus one and I divided it by x plus two, the answer would be x squared minus two x plus four minus nine over x plus two. This is just uh, a property of this higher degree polynomial divided, being divided by a lower degree polynomial. So why does that help me in my actual question? Well, that means that if I go back up here and I actually carry out this integration, what I have is the integral of x cubed minus one over x plus two dx. Instead of doing that question, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna replace it by the question where I integrate 
this because these two things are the exact same. So rather than integrate the x cubed minus one divided by x plus two, I'm going to uh, integrate uh, it written in this form, in this way. So that's actually equal to the integral of x squared minus two x plus four minus nine over x plus two dx. Okay, so you might think to yourself, well, this doesn't really make things simpler. It actually looks like it makes things way more complicated, but it's actually not because um, what we now can do is using our integration rules, um, we can actually split uh, this big integral up into actually four different ones. The integral of x squared, the integral of negative two x, the integral of four, the integral of negative nine over x plus two. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Because of our integration rules, nothing to do with substitution, nothing to do with um, synthetic or sorry, uh, long division here. This is just a rule of uh, indefinite integrals. It says that I can split this up into x squared dx plus the integral of negative two x dx plus the integral of four dx uh, plus the integral of negative nine over x plus two dx. Okay, so uh, so that's fine. Um, I can actually use more uh, anti, uh, indefinite integral rules. I'll just rewrite this as this for now. Um, my indefinite integral rule says that whenever I have a number like negative two, which is multiplying uh, a function in my integrand, I can actually pull the number out. I can pull this negative two out. So this becomes negative two times the integral of x, uh, x dx. So I just take the constant, I pull it out. I take the negative two and I pull it out. Uh, same thing here, um, I can actually take the four out, um, but I am just gonna leave it in there because I do have a formula for that. So uh, the integral of four dx. And here I have negative nine multiplying the function one over x plus two, so I can pull the negative nine out and I'm left with just one over x plus two dx. Okay, so I'm just actually gonna cut this off and I'm gonna keep going. The antiderivative of x squared dx is x cubed um, one third times x cubed, that's the antiderivative of just the first part, minus two times the antiderivative of this one is one half x to the power of two. So that's the antiderivative of x. Then I can do the antiderivative of four, which is just four x. And uh, subtract off nine times the antiderivative of one over x plus two dx. Now it's here where I might use substitution, uh, and actually, sorry, um, plus a constant. All of the constants from all of these terms, I wanna throw into one big constant plus c here. The only thing I have left to do is actually carry out this integration here, the integral of one over x plus two. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over to the side here, and I'm just gonna forget about all the rest of this stuff, and I'm just going to say, what is the integral of one over x plus two? So this is kind of like a side question or a little sub question. What is this integral? Well, here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use substitution rule. I'm just gonna let u, I'm gonna let u equal x plus two. And so this becomes the integral of one over u du. Oh, not one over u du, the integral of one over u dx. And then what I wanna do is I wanna get rid of this dx here. So I'm gonna actually maybe go and do yet another side calculation and to figure out what dx is, I'm gonna take a derivative of u with respect to x and that's just one. Um, treating this as a fraction, even though it's not, will, will help me out. So I'm going to, um, and still give me the right answer. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna solve this equation for dx and at the end of the day, I end up with dx is equal to du. So now wherever I see a dx in my integration, I can just replace it by du. So that's what I'm gonna do. This is one over u du. And of course I can anti-differentiate this. I have a rule for this. This is ln absolute value of u plus say another constant c2. So now, wherever in my original equation or original question, I have the integral of one over x plus two dx, I can actually replace it with what the actual answer is. Um, and I'll replace the u here by what it actually is, x plus two plus c2. So now I'm gonna stick this in to my actual, my actual answer, um, wherever I see the integral of one over x plus two, because this is actually what it, the integral of one over x plus two is. Okay, so our, our actual, integral, so let me uh, rewrite this. The thing that we're actually looking for, this integral, after all of our hard work, comes down to uh, 
1 over 3 x cubed from up here. I'm going to multiply this negative 2 in, and this gives me negative 2, uh, sorry, negative 2 times 1 half is just 1, so it's negative x squared plus 4x minus 9. Now, what was this integral of 1 over x plus 2? Well, after our long calculation here, what we realize it, it was the natural log of x plus 2 in absolute values plus c2. And of course, I have this constant hanging out. And then when I multiply the 9 in and finish cleaning this up, I have 1 third x cubed minus x squared plus 4x minus 9 ln x plus 2. Um, negative 9 times this c2, maybe I'll call that, say, c3. So that becomes c3 plus this constant c. And of course, this is some arbitrary constant. It's some number that I don't know what it is. This is another constant, some other number that I don't know what it is. So I'm just going to combine those into one giant constant. Most textbooks would just leave the giant constant as c. Um, just for clarity, I'm going to write it as d. So the final answer is... 1 third x cubed minus 9, or minus x squared plus 4x minus 9 ln x plus 2 plus some constant d.